Okay, so if you go to your system, you go to company, you go to the setup tab, so it's shown on this screenshot here, and you go down to import data, you'll see a list of all the different places in Intact where you can import to. So you might already, you know, be importing your invoices, but you might not know that you can import, you know, update your suppliers in this way. You might not know that you can actually add payments this way, or you might not know that you can do your journals or, or anything like that. So that it will show you a whole sort of library of different options that you can see. So you've got the option to import directly from here, but then you've also got the option here to grab one of the templates. And this is what we're going to be having a little look at now. So if I sneak into my demo and I just do what I, what I just mentioned there, which is go to company and go to my setup tab and go to import data, you'll see all these different options here of, of where you can import. So a lot of people, like I say, might already have a invoices set up, but they might not have known that they can update all this other stuff um, when they're putting these onto the system as well. So it's worth uh, it's worth taking a look. You'll see the different options to import. There's an import new option there as well, which is some fitness that say you're just kind of trialing out. Um, but what you will see here is your template. So if I just scroll down um, and we'll pick on accounts payable purchase invoices today. So we'll go on to template and what it will do, it will download a template here for you, which you'll be able to see. I'll just sneak back into there. This is the screenshot of what of one of them templates. We will pop in to go and have another look at it now. So um, for this example, uh, for our, obviously the demos, we're going to use the AP invoices now because that's what we've picked on. But what you will notice from the template is the first row of your headers. It's kind of been changed. This is how the system reads out the file. So this needs to stay as it is. The next row you're going to see it's got hashtag in it so this is pretty much this will get ignored completely ignored by the system likewise if you have any rows that you want to add in um but you just want to completely ignore then um you can add the hashtag in the system one common one that i would use is if i was popping a journal on i just add a row at the end to make sure it balanced i'd put a hashtag at the start of that row and then it would just ignore that row as a line but i've obviously done a check to make sure that it's balanced okay so that's purely information for you and it's for your benefit and a few of the different features on there now i'll show you so it goes it talks about length so it'll say that if there's a character length on it this is particularly useful if you're choosing to import payment files because back references um, and things like that can have a, a character limit on it which is a common one that we get um, so you can say if it's required or not so if it's required it's mandatory um, you need to fill this in or the import will fail it will not accept it so you need a vendor ID obviously you can't put an invoice on without it going to a vendor that's definite but we don't necessarily need a PO sometimes you don't always have a PO okay and then yeah as I mentioned the length and a couple of other things we've got so it'll obviously also give you say um no dependencies so it'll say if it's unique or not or if it refers to a valid vendor so that will go in dependent on if the fact it's it, it's relevant to a valid vendor okay so this should help you when you're filling your file in what you will see now uh, when we go into the system and see the file that i've just downloaded these files can have lots and lots of columns on so the template that you're getting from the system has got a column for every single area that you can import on on that so for the supplier record for single box on the supplier record we'll have an import file option so a lot of them you probably won't want um, and you probably won't need we have shortened down versions of these, so I'll show you one of those as well. You just might just want to create your own. Don't feel like you need to keep all the columns in there. Unless they're required, you, you can get rid of them um, if they're not something that you're going to use. So let's go back now to the system. I think I did download that file, so let's open it, to enable it, editing on it. And you'll see, um, as I said here, it's massive. So there's quite a lot of information there all the different options um and obviously the ones that you need are only the ones that are relevant to you so you might not really use pay to and re return to addresses um and things like that or you might not even be put in you might not have multi-currency everything you deal with might be gbp so you can get rid of all this you don't need base currencies exchange rates stuff like that so you can go through the file and tailor it to what you need it doesn't need to be massive 
Okay, I'll quickly show you what, what I made earlier. And um, this is my file that I use when I'm doing training with someone and I send them a file option out and I've kind of already just got rid of what they don't need. And I popped a little example line on as well, um, give them a little brief explanation of what they are, um, said if it's mandatory or it's optional. And then I've just sort of filled it in to show them what you know what it would look like and how it needs to be filled in. So you can see I've got rid of quite a lot of columns there. I've included the dimensions at the end, um, but a lot again the optional. Of some people don't use all of the dimensions, so we can get rid of them. Um, and then yeah, so if you, if you want a copy of any of these files, then do let us know. It can take some fiddling with to get it right, but once it's up and running, it is going to save you so much time. Um, if it's not invoicing, it could, like I say, be payments, it could be adding new suppliers, it could be orders, it could be all sorts. So have a little look and, and just let us know if there's anything you need. 